Hey guys, Jason, and today I'm going to show you how to get Tails. Now, Tails is a Linux distribution of Tor. So if you don't know what Tor is, Tor is a system that was developed by the Navy uh, using a thing called Onion Routing. And the idea is to make you anonymous online by using a client or a web browser. Now, you can go to Tor and you can download the Tor bundle. And the Tor bundle is a little package that you can download to your Windows PC or your Mac or even a Linux distribution. And this software allows you to utilize Tor in its essence. The problem with it is there's a lot of vulnerabilities when you download to an operating system running on a computer. Necessarily an operating system that you use every day. So this new distribution came out a few years ago called Tails. And what it incorporates is the idea of a one-time boot or a basically a one-time boot and then it you know, flushes all the memory and all the data that you use in that session on either a CD or the next gen USB or you know a like device. So this operating system not only does it run Tor for you inside its confined Linux distribution but it also um, spoofs your MAC address and has a couple other interesting features where it can look like Windows or a lot of different features. Now people might say well Jason why do I need to get Tails versus just getting the Tor bundle? Well, there's two major vulnerabilities that can be accomplished with Tor. One of them, Tails fixes, and the other one, it doesn't. So if you wanted to break Tor, one of the things you would do is you would monitor every single network connection in the world, and you would look for the outcoming connection from a home user, and try to figure out where else in the world that co connection is coming out of the Tor network. So you can't break the Tor network, but you can monitor every connection in and every connection out. Now, as you can imagine, this takes a lot of resources and it's pretty much impossible. But the other vulnerability, a lot easier to do. And we have you know, records of the FBI, NSA, and a lot of foreign governments doing this. What you do is you cause a, either a JavaScript vulnerability or a browser vulnerability that allows you to download some kind of program to the user's computer. So if I get on a Windows PC and download Tor, it's operating and running on my computer and my operating system that I use every day. Suddenly, this program is able to gather information about me and figure out who that user was. So while Tor in itself, in the browser, is theoretically pr protected, the issue is vulnerabilities that come in the browser software and, and its ability through usually JavaScript or other things like we've heard about the heart, heart breed problems. And so all these issues are out there. Tails is an idea of protecting your MAC address you know, by, by modifying it, not giving the real MAC address, and by keeping a closed Linux distribution that doesn't really allow too much vulnerabilities or um, issues with basically using um, what we, a term we call zero-day exploits. Zero-day exploits are something that the government may know about or a um, company like Microsoft might know. What we call zero-day is before everybody else knows about it. Well, the NSA knew about Heartbleed way before anyone else and they were able to use that vulnerability to find hackers and to find terrorists. So when you're using the software to stay anonymous, the issue can be that you don't know zero-day exploits exist. So by using Tails, by using a distribution that is locked down, you're protected. Now, I'm going to show you today how to get this software and how to use this. But more importantly, I'm going to show you why it's important. So let's move over to my laptop. I'm going to show you how do we get Tails, and I'm going to then show you how to download it. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so we're on the computer right now, and I'm going to move around, and you see that I googled and I typed in Tails. I googled for the search term Tails, and the first one we see is Tails, privacy for anyone, anywhere. We're going to click on that link. Now check the web address, and always make sure when you're downloading something that it's HTTPS, and it's tails.boum.org. Now I'm going to go back to the camera real quick, put my headset down, and explain something. One of the reasons you might get Tails is to ensure protection. There's two different levels of people. You could choose to download Tails, you know, from any computer, from a home computer, over the Wi-Fi. Not as secure, but no problem. The issue some users have is that it creates a log that the government could know that you downloaded it. So I will make a side note and recommendation. If you are really concerned about your privacy, you could buy a laptop, and you could go to a computer 
at the library, download Tales like I'm going to show you, onto a CD like I'm going to show you, therefore your IP address is not logged. But the issue being, unless you really care about the government or anyone knowing you download this program, which I don't, there's no issue. Even if you're trying to be anonymous, not that big of an issue. So let's go back to Tails, and I'm going to roll down. Now it is a live operating system as it says here, and we're going to go to download Tails 1.2.1. Uh, for the record, this might be updated, it might be a newer version, just because of the fact that you know, Tails does get updated and that you might be watching this later on. Now, it explains first time use, you can, you know, explore that if you want. What we're looking for is the latest release, and we're going to do a direct download just because it's safer that way. Tails 1.2.1, again, that can vary the version. ISO image is what you're looking for. Now, you see this little green box, you want to click on that. Now, you see that it's going to take a long time to download. It's 908 megabytes. So, as it's downloading, I'm going to take my headset off for a second, and I'm going to explain what we're going to do. We're going to boot this. Basically, you'll be booting from a live CD, and I'll explain and show you how to do that. But we're going to pause right now until this is done downloading, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, guys, I'm back, and the file is downloaded. So, it's moved back to the computer, and I'm going to show you how to install it to a CD. Okay. So as you see, we have the program Tails downloaded to the computer. And I'm going to move this over to the side here. And I'm going to open up another folder. Okay. So, most PCs, what you'll be able to do is hover over and click one time with the left button. And then right click one time. And you see how it says burn disk image? Most Windows operating systems and some Macs allow you to do this right simply from the menu. And that's all we'll do. We'll click Burn Disk Image and it will give us the option. Now in case you don't have this option, I want to tell you what to do. You could go to My Computer and go to the DVD drive and you could open it up and you could get a program, an ISO program, burner program, or you could get a way to copy it over. But most computers nowadays, um, and I'm pretty sure, I know I tested this on Vista and I know XP, or not XP, but Windows 7 is doing it right now. You can literally just right click. So we're going to right click on the image and make sure it says Tails and then the version that you downloaded. And you're going to select the, the disk burner. If you have more than one, you can choose, but most people only have one DVD burner on their computer. Some people don't even have that anymore. Now I, I know what you're going to ask, you're going to say, well Jason, what if I want to get it on a flash drive instead of a, you know, a CD to start off? Well, that is impossible as of right now, as of the time of this video, you have to download to a CD first. And uh, I think you'll find that, at least my personal preference, I use flash drives all the time, but I find that with using Tails, I like to have them on CDs, and I'll explain that in more in detail in a minute. So we're going to click Burn, Verify Disk after burning, and click. Oh! One quick second. So. Because we need a CD to burn, we're going to open up our CD drive. I got one of these, they're, I get them for 50, 50 cents a piece coming with the CD case, and it's a blank CD. I get a DVD-R, and one of the reasons you want to get DVD-R versus a CD-R is because you need at least 4 gigabytes, and DVDs ours or DVD-R, has 4.7 gigabytes. And the reason they recommend at least 4 gigabytes is so that when future updates come out, you have more space to update and you know add installers to. So you're not confined to a limited version that would be outdated and have security flaws. So I'm going to take my CD, I'm going to put it in. Before I pop this in though, I want to make reference to why I use CDs over flash drives. So I can get a flash drive, an 8 gigabyte, for about $5 on Amazon. You can get it cheaper on you know Black Fridays or flash sales or whatever. And I might pay, you know, when I buy 50 CDs. 25 cents a CD, or I mean a DVD, because that's what I'm using. And you might say, Jason, why would I use a, a DVD instead of just a flash drive? Well, first of all, defaultly you have to install it to a CD DVD combo anyway. So why not just use it? Well, here's what I do. When I download Tails and I use it on a CD, I use it for maybe four or five days, if that. Sometimes just one time use if I'm doing something you know heavily security wise that I don't want any content stored to. Now, Tails officially states that no data is ever downloaded to the CD. That it is everything's booted off that CD, run on the computer's operating system or a computer's motherboard and CPU, 
and RAM, and it never alters anything on the CD. And I believe that. I believe their intention is to provide that. But I'm not saying there's not, there could be a vulnerability out there that would allow an attacker to get past a browser, browser exploit, maybe even a Tails exploit, and add something to that DVD. And again, we talked about you know people being able to add, add data to content and then be able to identify you. So what I do every few days, every you know four or five days, if I'm going to be using Tails, and I use it very solemnly, but if I'm going to use it after four or five days, for the CD, I break the CD in half, throw one in one trash can, throw the other piece in another trash can, and pause whatever get the data back. It's a secure way. You can't really you can take a hammer tail flash drive, but even then the microchips can be restored on SSDs. Same thing for a DVD CD throw them in two different trash cans, your security level just improved vastly. And for 25 cents a CD or DVD, it's not really that expensive. So that, that explains why I use CD DVD combos and I don't use flash drives for this operation. It also is a convenience factor because you don't have to, you don't have to just put it to a flash drive. Although if you like to keep it in your purse or pocket, a flash drive is of course the best option. Let's get back, let's push this DVD into the computer and let's get back to the computer, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so like I said, we want to right click on Tails. We want to click Burn Disk Image. And the computer will take a second because I just popped in a DVD into the computer. A, bl a blank DVD, by the way. And I am going to again, you always roll down just to make sure there's no other odd systems going on there, you know, other. Maybe you have two DVD drives to record you. Maybe you, you do that kind of combo. But most computers that are under $1,000, which I'm assuming what you're using, only has one DVD drive. So then we selected the disk burner. We want to verify disk after burning. And we want to burn. Now what this is doing is it's taking the Tails operating system of your computer or that you've downloaded from their website, and you're installing it to a disk. And when you run a CD or a DVD, in your computer, and the operating system that reside, resides on that CD or DVD it is called a live boot CD. And so, while this is burning to the disk image, I'm going to roll back over to the camera and explain what this process does. So, when your computer starts, it rolls the, the motherboard and CPU combo, and this is again very basic, not 100% accurate, but I'm um, explaining it in a way that my average user can understand. Your computer, your motherboard, CPU combo boots up your BIOS. And this BIOS program then, by default, runs your operating system. Now, most people's operating system is Windows, or in some, my new case, if you have a Mac, it's a Mac. And that's about it. So your BIOS automatically registers the C drive on your computer and boots that drive. Well, what happens is, if you put a flash drive that has an operating, a live operating system on it, or if you have a CD DVD that has an operating system on it, and you put it into the computer, and then when your computer's on a login screen, it varies from computer, but for me it's Escape or F12, is a thing called a boot menu. Now a boot menu allows for you to boot from that device. Normally, in this case, is what we call a live boot. A live boot is where you're running off that CD or DVD or flash drive or various other sources you could do. You could have it from a hard drive in your computer, which is how it defaultly runs. You boot off this device, and so files are pulled to constantly run that operating system. Uh, it involves a thing called a kernel, which is how it connects, how the processes of the operating system relate to the motherboard, but that's a little bit more in detail, and that's for another discussion. Right now, we're waiting on it to burn. It's burning the disk image to a recordable disk. This will take, a, um, depending on your speed, DVD drives and CD drives in computers, depending on how much you spend on your computer, vary in their speed and capability. Usually the highest I've ever seen is an X16, and that just means the speed that it can record to. So it is going to take a minute, so I'm going to pause again, sorry for all these pauses, and I'll get back to you when it's done burning. So did you notice what happened? The CD drive popped out a little bit. This is what happens when a computer program, or your computer, is done burning to a disk, be that if you're burning music, or an ISO image, it pops the disk right out for you. Now, I'm going to shift over here real quick, and if we look at the screen, we see that it shows a complete bar, and all I have to do is press close. You're now done, at least with the computer side of it. So, simply put, open up your CD. If you have to, move your flash drive to the side. Open up your disk drive, 
And one last thing. If you look at the CD, and I don't know if you guys can see it from here, but you'll see engravement. So you can see how far data went into your CD. You can actually see that your CD has been written on, which I always think is pretty cool, especially with DVDs, because you don't see that with flash drives nowadays. Or ever. <laughs> so we put this in, and you now have the latest version of Tails. In the next episode, I'll show you how to boot it and what it can do for you. Thanks for watching. This is Jason Schaffel.